All right. <laughs> it's 5.03, so I'm late. <laughs> all right. Let's get the meeting for uh, the 25th of October going. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, do roll call first. Uh, Steve Ball. Here. Phoebe Benziger. Here. Jan Chastain. Here. Chad Huffman. Here. Uh, Delphine Shadow is absent today. Uh, Richard Rogers is also absent. Ronald Cairns. Here. And I'm David Fishering, and I'm here. Uh, on the minutes, uh, I'm going to write in here, Sharon. Uh, the only thing that I saw was that actually that I called the meeting to order. I wasn't here the last meeting, so oh, Chad. Ch yeah, Ch oh. Chad called the meeting to order. I assume. Oh, see, I speak too, but I made a correction. Well, you're here in spirit. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I put uh, the wrong last name for Ron. I kind of got my meetings mixed up. Oh, okay. All right, well, okay, so with those two amendments, uh, is there anything else, guys, that you need to change? Okay, uh, then uh, with those amendments, do we have uh, approval of those minutes? That's so moved. Yeah. Thanks, Phoebe. Yeah. Second? I'll second. Thanks, Chad. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? All right, the minutes from last time are passed, or approved, rather. Um, staff, any additions or deletions? There are none. Okay, in that case, we've got two agenda items. And the first one is the Bluff Harbor, and the second one is our Osprey uh, addition. Both are initial zoning hearings. Go for it. All right, thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, if this looks familiar, you've actually already held an annexation zoning hearing on this property before. Uh, it was previously called the Palante addition. The property did change hands mid-annexation process, and so the agreements that had been signed by the previous property owner couldn't be recorded. Uh, we do have new agreements now, so we've restarted the annexation process. Uh, the name of the annexation has changed, as well as the applicants, but aside from that, uh, there's nothing different about this than what you heard previously, so we are making the same recommendation. Uh, this is an annexation of about 0 0.72 acres located off of Juniper Road. It's now being called the Bluff Harbor Lot Edition, and this is within the city's urban growth boundary, the city sewer service area, and the Minokan water service area. The area is urbanizing, and the property does meet contiguity requirements. The request is for MHR zoning, which stands for Manufactured Housing Residential District. The surrounding properties are also zoned MHR, or are outside of city limits. MHR is intended to provide a suitable environment for single-family conventional and mobile homes and is designed to allow a high density of single-family residences and related use. Um, and just to clarify, uh, it allows for manufactured housing. It does not require manufactured housing, so stick-built housing is still allowed. Uh, this is the annexation plat, which shows the property boundaries and the contiguity. This does meet the state requirements for contiguity. According to our comprehensive plan, this is technically listed as employment center, which would indicate that the area is appropriate for some commercial and or industrial zoning. Uh, but given the surrounding properties are all residential, uh, we do think that a residential zoning request is appropriate here. Uh, this is in growth area one, which represents the most cost efficient areas for the city to grow. And so in summary, the property is eligible for annexation and a new agreement has been signed uh, the proposal is consistent with the public health, safety, and welfare and the comprehensive plan. Again, this is the exact same zoning application that you already saw, but we do have to go through the motions again. Uh, so we do recommend approval of the MHR zoning. All right, thanks, William. <clears throat> you guys have any questions for staff? Down there? Ron, Jan? Nope. Okay. Uh, is the applicant here? Did they? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, in that case, I guess we'll uh, open up this item for public comment. Uh, if there's anybody here that wants to ask a question or a concern or anything like that, now's the time. All right. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment portion. And if we need to discuss anything further up here, guys. This is just the same thing we've already done, just a different name. Yeah. And we approved it last time, so. <laughs> All right, between us, I was just confirming with David that this is something we've already approved. It's just a name change. So it's really Groundhog Day with uh, the new name. Right? Yeah, that's correct. So the, um, the, 
the, the name has changed, the applicants have changed, but other than that, this is the exact same application that you've already heard. And um, you did vote to approve uh, it the last time, not to say that that means you have to vote to approve it this time, but we do recommend approval here. Okay. Any concerns, guys? I mean, the fact that it's surrounded by MHR is, yeah, and we, like I said, nothing's changed from the last one. We didn't have trouble with it last time, so. Yeah, let's not make trouble. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, in that case, uh, I'll hear a motion. Um, or entertain one, rather. I, I would be happy to. I hereby make a motion to recommend to City Council approval the initial zoning request of MHR, Manufactured Housing Residential District. The request meets the code criteria based on the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report. All right. Do I have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Ron. Uh, any discussion necessary? No? No? Okay. Uh, in that case, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Okay. Motion passes unanimously. And on to agenda item number two. All right. Thank you. Uh, this one is a new annexation application. Uh, the schedule is shown here. Tonight is obviously the zoning hearing, and we do plan to bring this to City Council for the first reading of the annexation and zoning ordinances on November 7th, and then the second hearing would be on November 14th. The Osprey addition is a 9.53 acre annexation. It is within the city's urban growth boundary, city sewer and water service area, and the property is entirely surrounded by existing city limits. So this is also getting rid of uh, one of the county enclaves that currently exists. The surrounding area is zoned B2 Highway Commercial District to the west. Uh, some more B2 and R2 low density and R3A medium high density district to the south. R3A to the east and R4 high density district to the north. Uh, this one is a bit unique because the request is actually for multiple zoning districts. There is a sliver of right of way that was never technically annexed and so that's proposed to be R3A in order to match the rest of the right of way. Uh, and, and that's so thin you can't really see it on this map here. Uh, the western portion would be zoned P public district which is about 5.39 acres and the eastern side would be R4 high density district or about 3.98 acres. Uh, this was, these, these amounts were recently updated so there is a mistake in the, uh, the memo regarding the exact acreage of these but the, uh, the zoning exhibit that is shown in the packet is the correct acreage. Uh, this map here is just an approximation just to show the proposed zoning uh, with the surrounding zoning as well. We do have this zoning exhibit that's part of the, the overall annexation application and this shows the exact legal description of where the proposed zoning would be delineated. We are also working on a minor subdivision plat that would be recorded right after uh, the property is annexed. We can't technically record it right now since it's not in city limits, but we would get that done uh, right away once it is within city limits. The property lines on that subdivision plat would follow exactly where these lines are shown here. Uh, the western portion is planned for the new All Points Transit Facility, and the eastern portion would ideally be some multifamily housing. Uh, it would be a great place for high-density housing, given the proximity to public transit. Uh, in the planning world, we call that transit-oriented development. Uh, it's also near existing commercial development, adjacent uh, multifamily development, and this is also an urbanizing corridor that is ripe for high-density housing. Uh, this shows the annexation plat and is a legal description of the property being annexed. Uh, as mentioned, 100% of the property boundary exist borders existing city limits, and so this will eliminate an existing enclave. According to the future land use map, this is designated as residential mixed density low, which indicates the area is appropriate for single family and some attached residential development like duplexes or townhomes. The property is also within growth area one, which the majority of enclaves are designated as, and indicates available utilities and encourages high density development. And then here are some relevant goals found within our comprehensive plan. Uh, in land use chapter goal five, uh, encourages infill and redevelopment. And this is probably one of the best examples of in infill development that you could find in Montrose. We do strive to promote higher density development in infill sites, especially in areas easily accessible by foot, bike, and or public transit. Uh, in our housing goals, we also encourage a mix of housing types, including multifamily and a variety of housing densities. Of course, we also just went through our housing needs assessment and the proposed high density zoning would help to alleviate some of the housing needs found in the community. 
Uh, and goal two encourages an increased access to affordable housing, providing choices for residents of all incomes and ages. And so in summary, the area is urbanizing and 100% of the property borders existing city limits. An annexation agreement has been signed. Uh, we do find that the proposal is consistent with the public health, safety, welfare, and annexation policies and meets numerous goals within the comprehensive plan. Staff recommends approval of the proposed zoning designations as presented. Uh, that concludes my presentation. I believe Scott Murphy has some uh, things he'd like to share as well. Do you want me to? Yeah, if you don't mind, my if screen. I can Thanks, steal Scott. the. Or Thanks, William. Go doing? ahead, Scott. Um, thank you, David. Um, so I was going to talk through some of the kind of big picture projects going on in the area since they um, relate to this and how this is being set up. Um, as soon as I can get projecting here. Okay, awesome. Um, so going back along, I don't know, I guess 2015 now, 17, somewhere in there, they all blur together. Um, if you remember, the city widened East Oak Grove Road. It used to be pretty narrow, 20-foot um, wide road um, to minor arterial standards through here. Um, then came the South Hillcrest extension. Um, the overall goal being we need alternate routes to Townsend. And, with, and these products take a long time to implement um, when you put in all their layers. And so as we're seeing continued traffic growth um, in the community, uh, you know, just trying to stay ahead of it keeps me up at night. Uh, the most recent one of those was the Woodgate realignment, um, where, we, where it used to come into kind of a bottleneck on Townsend there and really bunged up this light. Um, it now connects directly over to, uh, over to Woodgate. That was a public-private partnership with these landowners. Took a while to get there on the acquisition piece. Um, when we did that, the, all the traffic studies for that um, indicated the need for a roundabout at that intersection, um, but we didn't have the property yet. And so um, the landowners of that property to the north, which is the one we're looking to annex here, um, at that time weren't interested in selling to the city. If we weren't ready to go to construction, we weren't interested in eminent domain. That gets pretty contentious. And so, um, you know, we had, we had timelines with the original owner moved forward with the realignment, which was a pretty substantial project in itself um, with the roundabout to follow. Um, fortunately, we have new owners of the um, property here who are um, interested in, in developing the property and also, you know, helping to meet the community's needs and interests in this area. Uh, it's Dean McCall here. Um, he's the owner of the parcel that's um, him and a partner are the owners of this parcel that we're talking about today. Um, with that, they were interested in um, partnering on the acquisition to um, put the roundabout in here. Um, so city council entered into a development agreement with the owners there to secure that right of way, um, but not just the roundabout, but also to secure the right of way, which is another comp plan. Um, in the comp plan, uh, various versions have had connections between, uh, interconnections between Oak Grove going north um, so that the uh, like big five, uh, Office Depot, that was kind of comp Murdoch's even, those complexes there, they have a really, as traffic growth continues on Townsend and, and CDOT won't allow any additional signals because they have minimum spacing requirements, it's really hard to get out of those areas. And so that's why the comp plan has always had, you know, I think for the last several decades, this backage road connector concept here. Um, we've been, we worked with uh, the owner on this one and that have secured the right of way to go north from here as well. And then we're, we are, 90% done with the agreement to the next landowners to the north to continue it all the way up to Encanto Place, um, which then gives an outlet for those areas, you know, long range to get down to the signal at Oak Grove. So you could come down the back of Big Five, get down to the signal there, and uh, and actually get left if you're trying to go southbound on Townsend. Um, so that was, you know, the, the land for the roundabout was was the first, we always go for three furs or four furs, that was the first fur. Um, Getting the backage road, um, that was kind of the next piece of the puzzle. Um, and then All Points was the kind of latest piece of this puzzle. So um, All Points Transit, if you remember, used to be situated, they had their transit center um, just south of the police department. Um, when the police department expanded, um, that lease was terminated and they um, have been kind of in temporary places ever since looking for a permanent home. Um, what All Points, and we're joined by a couple of their board members, um, John and David here today, and I forgot your name. Uh, Gary, yeah, thank you. Um, and we appreciate them being here. They canceled their board meeting to join us, so thank you. Um, uh, they've been looking for a place ever since, you know, so two years now. Um, it's pretty, di you know, their primary service is elderly, and I'll let them speak to this, but um, centrally located, easily accessible, makes their routes really efficient. 
um, and, and available to the community. Um, it's hard to find a place in the middle of town that has that, that has room to grow and will meet their long-term needs. Um, as all of this kind of partnership with the city came um, online for the roundabout and its infrastructure, that then opened this site, um, that made this site developable. Um, Dean McCall and them were uh, open to selling to All Points, has been, have been working with them and I think are, are close to um, a sale of the property. Uh, I think it's letter of intent stage or what have you. But uh, um, the plan is to, on that P portion of the zoning, to put All Points on that side there. So that's number three. Um, number four, um, as William alluded to, um, with the high density to the north, keeping this, this corridor is definitely changing. So you think about the Woodgate realignment, it's becoming a backage corridor. If you go down towards Starbucks and all that, this kind of Woodgate, it's, you know, outside of towns and it's, or outside of, you know, the, this, the highway corridors, towns and San Juan, all those, it's, um, it's up there as one of the busiest streets in town volume wise. So there's just a lot of activity on that belt just off of Townsend. Um, so it's a good candidate for high density housing. Um, the state is also has a lot of initiatives pushing for um, high density housing next to transit areas. And so that kind of creates more synergies that um, make that more worthwhile because as we've discovered and seen, um, there's not a lot of people looking, knocking on the door to put in um, apartment housing or higher density, higher density housing um, in Montrose because there's so many other markets they can do it in and the cost of construction here are higher. So any of those other programs that can help them make that a reality um, can be good for our community. So we had a lot of pieces coming together on this. Um, because all points was going in on that one side, that's what drove the P zoning. We didn't want to put P across the whole property because P is very limited on what, and P is for public, is very limited on what can go in there. Um, the nice part is, is again, we have a minor subdivision that would um, come the same day as the annexation essentially. So. The, the problems with split zoning typically is they split zone it, they don't describe the boundary, it sits that way for 20 years, someone then comes in and puts a house and it's halfway on each zone. Um, because this is a city project, it's a city minor subdivision, that's all protected, so those lines will match on day one. Um, so it's, it's, it's a split zone for a couple minutes until the recorder scans it. Um, the other thing, kind of big picture on the project as well is the, is the roundabout there, so with the um, agreement with the landowner that is scheduled to begin this October. Um, can't come soon enough. We've had a lot of use of that corridor. It's, it's even more than we, we, we were pretty conservative in our estimates and it's even higher than that. Um, long range East Oak Grove will punch through, as you can see the right of way that's already here, through the bridges up to 6700 with the 6700 extension, this corridor, corridor will see even more. So it's, um, it's one of those things for, you know, the long range growth and traffic growth we're seeing trying to stay ahead of it. Um, I think this is the first I've gone public with this news, but it is looking to be a two-lane roundabout in order to stay ahead of those volumes. So um, Facebook will have a lot of fun with that. Um, people like roundabouts now. We've got to push that boundary. Um, people get mad if we don't do them now. Um, you used to get death threats over roundabouts. but. Um, and uh, yeah, so all of that is scheduled again to begin construction this, this fall. It's under design, contract has been awarded. Um, and uh, yeah, I think, hopefully that just helps kind of shine some, it's kind of a unique product how all these different players came together. Um, and if you wouldn't mind if um, all points or the um, Dean wanted to speak to anything, maybe um, invite them. Yeah, up. thanks Scott. I mean, that answered probably every question that I think I had, but uh, yeah, applicant, if you want to come up first and then we'll open it to the public and the folks from all points can come up then. My name is David Keenholtz. I'm a real estate broker here in Montrose. I'm also a buyer broker representative for All Points Transit. David, can you give us your address too, please? 3400 Valley Way, Montrose, Colorado. Thanks. And this is Gary Clark. He's the new executive director of All Points Transit and John Nelson, who is the chairman of the board of directors for All Points Transit. We looked for a year and a half to two years at all kinds of sites for APT to try to locate. Um, they've been operating, uh, as Scott mentioned, and uh, did a really good job. Um, out of three or four different points and 
try to coordinate public transportation from those points and um, and and also the difficulty of being able to afford uh, land right on Townsend Avenue um, and which we looked at for some time um, but uh, I approached the owners of this property and they um, considered and were interested in it and uh, and then finding out from the city what the long-term traffic plans were for that area, it really fit well with, with APT because they're an expanding operation. Uh, they're going to be the largest local transit company in, uh, on the Western Slope uh, servicing out of Grand Junction to Telluride, to Ridgeway, to Uray. Uh, truly a, a area that um, needs mass transportation and calls for mass transportation. So anyway, with that in mind, um, we, um, Mr. McCall as the owner, um, was very good at, at talking with us about what, what plans we wanted to do and to delay um, the purchase of the property until we could do what we had to do uh, to be able to first annex and then uh, to subdivide the property. So he has been, he and his partners have been very patient. Uh, we are wanting to um, close on this property sometime towards the middle of January uh, of this coming year. So um, Mr. McCall has, from the start of it, uh, which was probably four or five months ago, um, consented to work with us and, and to uh, be able to put this project together. So I thank you folks for listening to us. And if you have any questions of us. Yeah, thanks, David. Do you have any questions? I, I actually do, David. Um, nope. So you're going to be like work, like people could park there and you would take them down to work and tell you right, correct? Is that, so is there going to be enough parking there for because right now they're all parked like in Safeway or, where, well, you know, they're just parked. Is that going to be an option? You'll have enough for people who are going to work down there to park and come back and? Yeah, so we, we are planning on, on um, a parking lot that's large enough to accommodate a, a park and ride type service, whether it's to Telluride or even just local. There, there should be enough parking to accommodate, yeah. That is one of the one of the objectives of the transit center is for people to be able to do that. It's a four point three acre site, so um, it's a it's a rather large parcel, and and that um, they're using a design firm, uh, mm -hmm. Stan architect, Tech. yes, Stan Tech. Stan Tech. Um, and we have well, I don't know how many reiterations <laughs> of the of the plan, but we think we're getting very close to um, putting together the final uh, composition of what the actual site will, will look like. It, it includes a maintenance center. Um, it, it includes um, administrative facilities. Um, so it, it'll be a complete, and that will also consolidate all these other areas and people that are, have transit vehicles in their backyards and so on and so forth so so if this works out it's like glad that nothing else worked out till this happened right because you know i've been to a lot of meetings you're going to move out by community options you're mm -hmm. going to move like moses you're just kind of uh -huh. going everywhere trying to find a place to land so oh, yeah. all right thank you has got any other questions for the applicants you guys no okay thank you guys thank, thank you, you. Yep. Okay. Thanks, David. Hi, everybody. Thank you. My name is Dean McCall, um, 2130 Oregon Street. Um, Scott and everybody's done a great job of trying to communicate what kind of the vision is and what we were trying to achieve. Um, we, we acquired the property. The previous owner wasn't really willing to play and work with the city. Our vision and goal was to, to do that since we have surrounding land in the area. Um, Everything just fell into place. It just seemed like 
everything that I could think of as a vision to kind of be something that would be proud to be part of in Montrose just kind of came into play with this. Um, initially, I was looking for expanding our commercial marketing zone there with a large footprint and the access with the roads, but it just made a lot of sense in a transport station. Um, as you know, with the R4, I've got a couple of other projects going on with you guys here in the city that we've done, and I, I think we've delivered a good product. I looked at, and we are currently looking at the other area there for the R4, but I'll be honest, I don't want to be selfish and delay. If I can find somebody that's a national vendor that actually builds and does these and works with the state and does this, housing is more of an urgency for us than for me to be able to hold it and try to build it out and make money. So we will go that way. I will, I will try to get it up and get it running and built. Um, my primary job is I, I'm the CFO for one of the top largest employers in the city. Um, I have a large workforce. We need housing. And I hope that there's a time that I get to see our employees being able to live there, jump on the transport, go wherever they need. People from Delta, people from outlying areas take transport down here, get to us and offer us a workforce to meet our needs. You know, the labor market's tough and um, we're doing the best we can. Um, I appreciate it. Any questions? Thanks, Dean. You guys got any questions for Dean? You guys? Jan? Anybody? No? Okay. All right. Thank so, you. Thank you. I've got one question for uh, staff real quick. Um, so the P zoning, like I get it from a, uh, that it's a nonprofit that's going to be taking over there. Um, but the fact that it's a transit based business, are they going to have to come back to us and get that changed after the minor subdivision or get a CUP to do what they want to do? So the, I mean, the whole reason for the proposed split zoning is so that we don't have to uh, come back to this, come back to this with you uh, multiple times. Um, in theory, you know, we could just say we're going to zone it all R4 and then come back later once the minor subdivision and rezone it to P. But we could the, theoretically is, do is that. P, is P the closest thing we could get to actually let, like getting them to do it? Are we still going to have to like? Is there going to be additional steps to get them to where they want to go after this? Uh, P will get them there. Okay. Yeah. The ne and touching on that too, the next step would be a site development plan, assuming they come in with a, a package. But it would the zoning would allow for it. Okay. Is there any questions for staff before I open it up? Oh, go ahead. Yeah. So looking at the map. If I have this, you know, you got that house on the left-hand side on the corner there. And then you have some talking about the roundabout that you want to put in there. Have you acquired the other three sides yet to be able to put in that roundabout? Yes. So the, um, Bean is also one of the owners on this. So the development agreement that a council entered into um, for the roundabout and the backage road included both of these properties. Um, which includes relocation of that house. So that we've been working with uh, a local home mover, um, and it is in good enough condition that it can be relocated. Oh, really? Um, so the so the housing isn't lost. Um, cause it's a kind of ever since the road project, you got really steep driveway. It's kind of been it was barely set off of the old oak grove, let alone the widened oak grove. So um, we're excited to get that into a more appropriate place, and then um, this is pretty ripe for commercial uses as well, and already zoned um, for that. Um, the other two corners you can see when we did the Woodgate realignment, we were able to secure uh, these, these two corners and then this house is also owned by the city, but um, so far in the design looks like the house is going to be fine. This house on the southeastern corner will be able to stay. Since you brought it up, I'll ask you that one house you're going to move, that has asbestos siding on it. Yep, yep. So is that'll that all be abated. Is to move that with asbestos on that? You abate it first. So we've done all the evaluations and are um, currently um, we're waiting, there's a tenant in there, so um, once they move out, we'll do the abatement, do the relocation ahead of the roundabout project. Ah, um, so thank you. We had two, when we did the Woodgate realignment, there was two that we had to relocate, same thing. So they do all the abatement, and, and a lot of times they end up redoing sheetrock and all that after moving anyway. So it kind of works out well <laughs> a lot of times that some of that demo work is done for them. Um, we, we don't, you can, but we don't want to move a house just from a liability standpoint that's not abated. Okay, thank you. Any other questions for staff? Uh, we'll open up the <clears throat> excuse me. We'll open up the public comment portion of uh, for this agenda item. 
So if there's anybody out there that wants to come make a comment, um, please keep your comments and questions directed to us up here. State your name and address. Uh, if you do have questions as part of what you want to say or want answered, we will address those to the staff after your comments. Uh, my name is John Thurston. Um, I live here. I'll show you. <laughs> right there. So, catty corner to them. And uh, John, can you get, actually state your address for the record, though? 1764 East Oak Grove. Thanks. And I already spoke with uh, Scott about this, and it, he's pretty much answered my questions, but I just wanted to express uh, my thoughts um, so that all of you can hear. And um, when uh, Woodgate was realigned, um, it created a bypass, and I think Scott mentioned, uh, people will pull off behind Walmart and, and take a shortcut that voids all the stoplights on Townsend. And I'd like to say that traffic has increased by four times, but I think it's more than that. Um, and, and it's gotten so busy during rush hour that what I do is I just turn right. I don't try to make a left turn out of my driveway right there because it's not, not going to happen. Um, and I guess my point being is when they do the, these residential R4s in there, it'd be nice if they could get out and get to the traffic circle rather than driving directly onto East Oak Grove because if you want to make a left turn, you're, not, you're going to be there a long time. Um, um, you know, and, and I don't think we can do anything about the motorcycles that are drag racing on the street right now, but maybe, you know, the cops can work on that. Um, what, what, what else? Um, that pretty much uh, sums it up. I just, oh, oh, the last thing that helped is there's actually, this is a, a ridge line right here. And so there's kind of, it's kind of blind right there. If you're coming here, you don't see. And if you're coming this way, you don't, uh, you can't uh, visualize. And, and for that reason also, I was hoping that these people could get to the roundabout to get on because one of our neighbors lives uh, and, and comes out on, on either of these roads and she's scared to death to leave the house because she's had so many, uh, because of the blind spot there. Do you understand what I was saying about the, yep. you know, you're going over a hill like that. So anyway, that's all I wanted to say. Um, Sounds like a great plan, otherwise. Thanks, John, appreciate it. Anyone else? <laughs> John W. Nelson, 3246, County Road 22, Montrose 81403. They say that uh, no good deed goes unpunished. I was one of those involved in building a new police uh, public safety facility which kicked us out of, <clears throat> but I wasn't a member at that point. I just want to say that uh, public transportation is a becoming a major, major factor. Uh, I happen to have a dentist in uh, Ridgeway, banker in Ridgeway, and uh, <laughs> between the banker, the dentist, and the doctor, <clears throat> all three, their employees all come from Montrose. And we're finally getting set up to do that uh, Montrose Ridgeway Uray run. And it will be appreciated. I can't go to any of those professionals without the first question being, when, when's the bus coming? So it is a vital, uh, a vital activity. I've never seen a uh, nonprofit as expansive, as well run, as all points. And I say that because I've been in a couple. But just a few comments. Thank you. Cheers, John. Thanks. Anyone else? All right. We'll close the public comment portion. 
bring it back up here for any other questions or discussion. Uh, I've got one for Scott. Um, just to touch on uh, John's comments about the access and stuff. Um, so if we were to approve this, you've got the R4 section there, higher density, um, depending on uh, how the, the owner goes forward with any kind of development there. It could not come back before us if it's one building, you know, and it meets all the other things. But um, as far, it still go through site development though, so the staff will still approve some kind of project, correct? Okay, so uh, obviously that's an opportunity to look at access for that parcel and maybe potentially tying it through the, the, the connection road right to the uh, roundabout. But I'm counting right now like 10 access points from Woodgate back to uh, John's property. At what point does the city say, okay, well, we can't actually have more access points on there just because it's not safe? Because a bunch of those are within, you know, I mean, that's, that's a fairly big stretch, but a bunch of those are within 20 feet of each other. Yeah. Um, yeah, access management is its own whole animal. I'll try and answer it with not going too deep, but yeah. that's my tendency. Okay. I, I always go deep, so if, if you need me to peel back, let me know. Um, so in general, the practice is, yes, less consolidation of access points, access control is a good thing and, and safer. Um, you know, each access point does represent an increased potential for conflict. The way you mitigate that is, is concentration of access points. So a lot of new neighborhoods and the way our code's set up is like if a new residential comes in, they just can't directly access, like you can't have a house that's with a driveway that's access, accessing it. You know, there's sometimes, a, you know, special circumstances that you, that's your only choice. But for the most part, the goal is to get it to access the local roads. Um, for all points, we are able to do that. So with that back edge road that'll run north, um, they don't even have an access to Oak Grove. You don't want one that close to the roundabout. They're able to get off and then do the maneuvers back into the site. Um, that helps some of the access back here too, which helps some of the access issues they're having on, on Townsend. Um, we generally don't go through and eliminate access points, especially on city streets. Um, the, it, the kind of the reality of it is, is over time, like John said, it's just so busy, you don't want to bother with it and you're just going to hang it right. And in this case, you know, with this one, this one is likely because um, All Point serves a lot of um, elderly and has buses coming and going. To mix this traffic across All Point site is also not ideal. Um, the saving grace on this site is if they access here, um, they can hang it right in the roundabout so close that you can just go around the roundabout if you're if you and hang a U-turn to, to get back. Yeah. Um, so that kind of addresses that. But yeah, agree the site distance here with this hump and this was the design of this. They designed it for a. a Acceptable site distances at a 40 mile an hour speed limit because you're you got to match the thresholds and existing time points and we're way above on one side of the street and way below on the other and trying to balance all that. Um, that being said, I, I agree. I don't. It was designed for 40. There's people going more than that, <laughs> and that, there's the issue is you can see far enough if someone's going 40, but if someone is being a bonehead and coming up at 55, you know that creates a safety hazard, which it kind of becomes a police enforcement. Um, so. You know, it is kind of a natural reality of just the, the continued growth and, and all the vehicles we're seeing. Um, we wouldn't, we will never go through and close off any of the driveways on the south side. Anything new that comes in, we would specifically evaluate their site distances specifically to make sure that works. If you had, um, yeah, like a visibility concern for a left turn out or something, that would drive it to be a right in, right out, which in this case isn't a lot of consequence because they can just go to the roundabout or make it a three quarter movement or something. And Scott, even um, if that doesn't come back before us, uh, the city, this, you guys as staff will, if, you know, if, if it requires a traffic study, you would, you would make that happen at site development? Yes. Yep. Yeah. All that's evaluated. Um, yeah. Because essentially, yeah, our processes have to make sure that we have a say in all of it um, from a, you know, public health and safety standpoint to make sure that it's meeting those standards. Uh, and I agree that the, the traffic growth has been a lot. And it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard and it's hard to stay ahead of. Yep. Um, and speeding and you know all the all the things it's it's definitely there um and we're trying to give them a place to go because we don't want to add congestion on top of that either you know <laughs> um we wish we wish Oak, or hillcrest would have gone straight through and then you're not because then you eliminate this bottleneck because everything that comes down hillcrest is coming down elk grove to get down woodgate you know and avoid towns and but 
we also can't condemn you know 60 houses through here and wouldn't and um, Wait, not, you know not, not original in. sin from yeah. the 90s and, well i have a question right. go ahead Jan. not for tonight but probably but is there any talk at all in the future about a roundabout at uh, hillcrest and east oak grove because that, that is a mess at that it's spot. possible yeah that when we've looked at it so far the majority of the movements are going um west because you know they're coming down and it's right. essentially just have an offset intersection with a you know, three-quarter mile offset or what have you, but um, it hasn't, it's not close on warrants yet, but essentially every s intersection of every minor arterial in town where there's two miners are joining will eventually become a roundabout when you hit the volumes. And so we go to the, where the warrants are met, you know, this year's going to be Niagara Hillcrest this spring, summer, and then Woodgate, East Oak Grove this fall. Um, but, you know, as that, then you make new connections and traffic patterns move, we routinely update our counts and all those and, and kind of see where the next pressure points are building and just do a roundabout every summer for the rest of our lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you got your ready-made roundabout kits, right? What's that? You got your ready-made roundabout kits. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just <laughs> plop them down like SimCity. There you go. Boom. Yep. No. Uh, all right. You guys got any questions, other questions for staff? No? Any other discussion that? No? Okay. Yeah, I mean, it'd be awesome to have all points help them expand and everything else. It's great. So um, I'll entertain a motion. Oh, uh, all right. Go for I will do it again. I hereby make a motion to recommend to City Council approval the initial zoning request of R3A and medium high dis density district, R4 high density district, and P public district. Sounds like we've been really busy. This request meets the code criteria based on the evidence and testimony presented at this hearing and in the staff report. All right, uh, do I have a second? Yeah, I'll second. Thanks, Ron. Uh, any discussion necessary on the motion? No? All right, uh, in that case, all those in favor? Aye. All right, all those opposed? All right, motion passes unanimously. Yeah, good work on that one, guys. It's, uh, you know, good luck moving forward with that. Um, any other business staff? Nope. Nope. Okay. Uh, next meeting? Uh, we will have a meeting next, uh, next meeting, November 8th, I believe. Okay. And then what's the plan for the rest of the season? Just, just looking it up, anticipating <laughs> that question. Um, so we will have the November 22nd meeting canceled. <clears throat> That's the week of Thanksgiving. Uh, and then we will also have the December 27th meeting canceled, which is the week of Christmas. So uh, we'll have November 8th. We do have an item for that. And then it looks like we would have December 13th. Uh, assuming we have an item, we don't have anything queued up for that date yet, but uh, we'll keep you posted. Okay. I will not be here on the 8th, so Chad, all you, buddy. Sounds good. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. Anything else, guys? That is it. Okay. Uh, in that case, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, go, go, go. Oh, okay. I'd check with him just when you adjourn here. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. Motion to adjourn, Jan. All right. Seconded by somebody. Thanks, Chad. All right. All those in favor? All right. Meeting is adjourned.